ASP is back again with more Marine Corps equipment, belongings, and etc. So, Joe, what do we have here on the table? These will be personal first aid kits issued to each Marine. And um, What do we have here? All right. We'll start with the covers. This is pretty rare. This is the basically the World War I version of the first aid pouch. You put your first aid tin in this. Mm -hmm. I got this from a veteran who served on Guadalcanal, he was a second lieutenant. So even this pre-war stuff was still being issued. Okay. Okay. And we can see the grommets have pulling through. See? They've ripped out. That was the problem with these. The grommets pulled out way too easy. It was just wedged in there. Okay? And they fixed it. Just before World War II started, they took all existing stocks and sewed on a piece of material with a hook, and you still see the old grommet still in it. Mm -hmm. Now this one's cool. You can see the guy st stenciled the crap out of it with his name. Look at that. Three, four times in the same spot. Yeah. And then again on the inside, W.L. Davis. And we can see the USMC is still visible down in there. Right above my finger. Yeah, right there. All right, so this is the same pouch, but existing stock was simply refitted to work better. Yeah, and modified. Just yeah. modified, right. Now, when I got this pouch, it came with this tin. We see first date packet U.S. Navy. Mm -hmm. And look at the contract date. Valentine's Day, 1916. Hmm. And we hadn't even entered World War One yet, and they were still issuing these things out in World War Two. These don't throw out anything. Yeah. All right. And here's the same tin, but U.S. Army. Hmm. Now let's back up a little bit. We have this one here. We see the Eagle Globe and Anchor. Yeah. Okay, and we see the we see Port Chest, New York, contract 1917. Now this was manufactured after the tin ones were, yet I don't know that these ever made it to World War II. I have no idea. You know, I've never really seen them. Yeah. World War One photographs, you know, World War One collections, stuff like that, but there's a pretty good piece. And all it is is a giant bandage wrapped in paper. Yeah. You know? That's a pretty good piece. And then by the time the war was started, it was like a tuna can. You pulled the tin and this whole lip came off. Yeah. And there's a nine foot bandage in there. You know? This would have been pretty beat up. What's the date on this one? Not all of them are dated. Not all of them? This one is not. We see it was Johnson Johnson, New Brunswick, New Jersey, Chicago, yeah. Illinois. Um, you gotta remember, there was, a, there was a huge pharmaceutical company in New Jersey up until recently. Yeah. So even then, a lot of the medical gear I find is out of New Jersey. Hmm. Johnson Johnson, Block Drug Company, mm -hmm. stuff like that. All right, now this piece here this is a pretty good shape. Probably never issued other than some storage dirt. This is a U.S. Army first aid packet. Mm -hmm. right, it's, there's no Marines initials on it. No camo, no invasion mark, nothing. It's Army. We see the Jefferson Quartermaster Depot, 1942. Mm -hmm. Now the reason I'm showing it is, if you look at the photographs from Tarawa, almost every Marine you see photographed in, in the battle on that island, that's the first aid pouch they have on. Hmm. So it just goes to show, you know, they got what they got and acquired what they could. Yeah. You know? Now the, if you see this is basically new old stock, you can find these everywhere. Throughout the majority of the war, this is what was being issued. It was just an upgrade of the red one. In Massachusetts. Yeah. And then late in the war, it started coming in a cardboard box. Now, I'm not going to open the box, but what's in the box is this. Basically, regardless of how they've packaged them, it's all the same thing. Just a giant yeah. bandage. You know? Johnson & Johnson. Yeah, Johnson & Johnson. They were big suppliers, of course. Uh, same right on both sides. See, small first aid dressing, U.S. Army. There were none that said Navy or, or, or Marines by that point. Mm -hmm. They were getting all these from the Army, Army Supply. All right. Now this is really cool. These are pretty hard to find collectors wise. This is the kit, jungle, medical individual. Or known as the rolled up jungle first aid kit. Okay. These are pretty hard to find. Right, it's in pretty good shape. I was fortunate when I bought it. It's full of stuff, which always makes it cool. And there it is. Now, I don't know if those are the exact parts that belong in there, you know. But this is what you found, or that's this how, is what you that's got. That's how I found it, yeah. yeah. 
I can research it, it's not that hard. And I could spend a little time and get the exact piece to go back in each slot, and maybe someday I will. But most first aid kits all have the same thing anyway. Iodine, you know, boric acid, and bandages, bandages, bandages. Mm -hmm. You know? Now these are pretty big. Now you don't see a lot of combat photographs of these, but they were supposed to be rolled up and put in your bag. So there's nothing you're going to see in photographs like hanging off their belt. Yeah. You know? And uh, they're pretty rare. Um, then they came out with the, what was called the M2 Jungle First Aid Kit. Much more popular. My father even says he had one issued during the Vietnam War. So they look just like these. And this is the early version, the first contract one. You can see the, the binding tape is a different color. See how it's mm -hmm. kind of a two-tone? All right. This one was manufactured by Avery in 1943, which is the first year of the manufacturing for these things with 43. Mm -hmm. And it had its array of material on them. It has a bandage. All right. Insect repellent. Actually, what we'll do is the contents of the other one are in much better shape. But this is pretty much it. All right. And you see in here, band aids in there. Mm -hmm. All right. And a, a lot of photographs. You see guys attaching a second bandage pouch to the bottom. A lot. And especially like Iwo Jima, most of the pictures you see, the guys would attach it to their belt right in the center of their back. In between the two canteens. Mm -hmm. That's where they would put their jungle first aid kit. This particular one, the Betty Ann Bag Company, 1942. Everybody had a small business in their garage during World War II. If you could manufacture something, you could make money. Hmm. So the Betty Ann Bag Company probably worked out of their garage somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now here's a 1944 data. When you can see this one was, I got this one, it was still in the box. The contents that were in it, what were in it, everything's filled brand new. The only difference, it wasn't two-tone anymore. The only, the only difference in them is they added this loop in order to better hold the band-aids the band in. Yeah. And you see it was made by Boyd in 1944. Other than this, and the, and the lack of two-tone color, they're the same. It's the same thing. Now this one will go through the actual parts. Everything in here is in greater, better shape. Now the bandage, I don't I had this the sulfur powder. Okay. It had band-aids like we just saw. Insect repellent. For mosquitoes, biting flies, gnats, and fleas. Yeah. Look, Block Drug Company, Jersey City, New Jersey. They were a big supplier during the war. Alright. Halazone tablets. What is this for? Basically, you take a couple, you take a couple tablets and throw it in your canteen. Whenever you put your canteen into a stream. Ah, uh, purifying tablets. Right. The, the the bacteria in a jungle stream will. Yeah. No crap, brains out. You're done. You know. All right. I asked my grandfather about this. He basically said you got shot. And you took a wound tablet. I don't know what a wound tablet is, but. Almost all the jungle packs I find this is also in them. Okay. Iodine. Look, we spoke going crossbones right on it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, not to. Basically, drink it. basically, you pulled the string in order to rip it open. Yeah. Okay. And most importantly, for jungle fighting, Fraser's solution for athletes' feet. Remember, jungle rot on your feet was terrible. Yeah. Keeping your feet dry was hard, you know? Hold on, just getting that. Okay. All right. So once the Army and Marines stopped manufacturing those early pouches, everyone went to this style. Went to these styles. Yeah, this was it from... Mm -hmm. Early 43 on. This is what the style here. Now, these were both manufactured in 42, but by different companies. And you can see the slight differences in them. Yeah. I mean, regardless of the fact that this one's worn, this one's pretty new. But let's see, who manufactured this one? JS and S Company, whoever they were. Mm. And you can see it can be put right through the belt 
all by using the wire hook. Mm -hmm. It seems like most of the photographs you see, they didn't use the hook. Because with the hook, it's going to flap around. Yeah. It's a lot tighter that way. Right through the belt, you know. And that's it. Personal first aid kits. All right. Nice collection. Let's go on to more of Joe's collection of Marine Corps equipment, belongings, uniforms, and eventually weapons. So stay tuned, guys.